Good morning, welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to my channel. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Now, this is the summer of 2023, August, and it's really hot here, but I've been doing an awful lot of traveling this summer. Most of that's behind me. It's worn me out. I can't tell you how, how hard that is on me, but I just got back from a two-day riverboat trip that went from Leclerc, Iowa to Dubuque, Iowa. Now, I've been on that that trip before. It's just awesome because I love the Mississippi River. I love all the rivers. I'm a river rat, I guess. And you know, there there is a video coming up on the great uh, Peterson <laughs> uh, boat ride to Florida. But uh, I don't know when I'll do that because the slides aren't good. The color's all gone. I was really disappointed when I rediscovered them. Anyway, uh, I made several videos uh, and I hope you'll watch them. I guess we have to call them uh, field trips, but in Dubuque we uh, stayed overnight at a beautiful hotel and then just a few hundred yards away was the uh, world-renowned museum I'm reading. It's called the National Mississippi R National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium and that's at Dubuque and in our rather costly ticket for the boat was included a uh, admission to this so we had about two or three hours there. It's really interesting. It's great actually. So I'll probably divide that up into a couple of videos, but the, the first one here, I'm visiting a recreated machine shop where uh, inboard, outboard, uh, no, they're inboard motors were made, marine engines, because they're right on the river there. And uh, so this machine shop is line shaft driven with all the pulleys and belts, and uh, I always find that fascinating. I had a good talk with the curator. I think I got a couple good shots of that. The audio is not very good. I didn't think it would be. I'm going to buy a microphone for my iPhone. Matter of fact, it's on order from Scamazon right now. It should be here tomorrow, but that's too late. So anyway, the audio was not that great, so I might do some voiceovers if I can figure out how to do that. And then if anyone watches that, there'll be some follow-up videos where they had... Uh, a workshop recreated there with all the original tools and toolboxes and foundry patterns. I find the historical uh, stuff just fascinating. And I was explaining to the curator, you know, he's told me a few things, but I guess maybe I told him a few things about the, the grease monkeys that would have been up in the rafters, the young boys doing all of the oiling. Also, I told him the story about J.R. Williams' great cartoons called Bowl of the Woods that uh, is centered around line shaft driven machine shops and I've talked about that before. So, alright, let, let's get started. And it's only about a, six minutes or so, but I tried to do some close-ups and, and uh, follow the path of the the belts and all of that stuff. So, that was a long introduction. Let's go! Yeah. Okay, I'm here at the wonderful exhibit of a line shaft driven machine shop. Notice the little steam engine that is powering it. In a real shop, probably it would have been a much larger engine, possibly even in another building, or an electric motor in later days, and a hand wheel up there for mechanics to rotate that shaft while they're doing setups. Can you visualize a 13-year-old boy climbing around in the beams and rafters lubricating these bearings on the shafts that probably needed attention every day? And when the machinist looked up, he would see these boys scrambling around looking like monkeys in the jungle. And that's where the term grease monkey came from. Notice the wooden lever right there that the lathe operator would have shifted over to turn the belt power on to his machine. There were no electric motors. Some of these lathes are very old, Civil War vintage even. I remember my father taking me into shops like this as a small boy.
and I would look up in wonderment, but they would have been run by electric motors, not a steam engine. There's a really old lathe. And there's my wife in the background, probably bored to death, but very patient with me. I'm glad to have her. And there's some various drills, more staper, and a flywheel that they were machining, and even a pot belly stove, and look at that old hacksaw. I had one almost that old at the high school. It was a marvel, a marvel of poverty. This is the only lathe in the shop that has guards, and he was explaining that even 100 years ago, they were concerned about safety, and this is one of the very first machines to use guards. Would you uh, throw that lever again so I can show what's happening there? And this one above here is the interlocking uh, uh, engagement. Over here, more like a sliding gate. Right. I failed to ask him, but I believe that engine is being run by compressed air. It probably would have been pretty noisy in there with all the machines running and the belts slapping. In this short clip, I'm attempting to show you some of the beauty in the castings of these early machines, where you think they would have just wanted to crank them out and be done with it, but they spent a lot of time in industrial design, almost like an artist created some of this. And Keith Rucker has talked about this in some of his videos as well, but it's very appealing to the eye. When I was a teenager in machine shop class, we had two planers like this, about this size. They weren't this old or highly ornamented, but I did love operating them, although it was a bit scary for a 16-year-old. But look at, again, the beauty of the casting. This machine is circa 1865 Civil War. Notice the position of the rack on the bed. It's below the lead screw rather than above and attached to the bottom of the bed. Now there may be a follow-up video to this as I said earlier so watch for future videos and I've just been making a lot of videos. There's at least 20 in the can that are unpublished at this time but I'm going back to it with a vengeance in September and October as the weather moderates around here in northern Illinois. Thanks for watching. See you next time.